Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And let me plug the uh, computer in before the battery dies. There we go. I don't want to have it battery be dying when I'm doing a video. Um, and I'm coming at you today with a collection update. And there is quite a bit of stuff here. So I'm just going to go ahead and get right into it. So first up, I did actually get a book. Remove those for now. Um, I did see this at one of the thrift stores, and it is called "Break On Through: The Life and Death of Jim Morrison" from The Doors. Um, I am a fan of The Doors. I have always enjoyed their music, and uh, this book was like forty-nine cents. Um, it's a pretty big book too. It's five hundred and forty-four pages total. Um, so yeah, and of course there are some uh, some black and white uh, picture inserts here, which is pretty cool. So there's some early shots of the doors, but yeah, I mean for forty nine cents, I figured uh, why not uh, pick this up. So yeah, and I can look forward to reading this movie, reading this movie. I said that because the author, one of the authors of the book worked on the movie um and this came out in the uk because it actually has the pounds instead of the dollar sign on there so that's interesting um when did this book come out 1991 so this is right when the movie came out so there you go but yeah so i'm looking forward to reading this book not reading this movie because you don't read movies you watch movies um if i could get my head out of my ass that would be great um so moving on uh next i did actually get a number of video games here uh for a change uh, the first two i got at uh one of the thrift stores they were both 4.99 a piece which is pretty cool so first up i got the uh director's cut of resident evil and this is the dual shock version as you can see which is why i got it because i hate how uh, Resident Evil 1 and 2 um, were, of course, in the beginning of the PlayStation's life before the DualShock controller came out. Um, luckily, they did do DualShock versions. Um, again, obviously why I have this one. Resident Evil 2, I don't have the DualShock version yet. I would like to get it. But yeah, this was $4.99, as you can see by the sticker which is awesome. I'm sorry, my eyes kind of fucked up. And the disc is absolutely perfect. There are no scratches on there whatsoever. Um, but for some reason, they did use the Resident Evil 2 as the background. And then, of course, there is the ad for Resident Evil 2 in there. Um, yeah, I know it's the greatest hits label, but for five bucks, I'm not going to pass that deal up. You know what I mean? Um, so, hell yeah. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, I have not played the original Resident Evil in many years. Um, there was a guy that I used to be friends with. Um, we're not friends anymore for many reasons. Um, and I remember borrowing this version from him. I don't know if it was the DualShock version or if it wasn't, but I do remember playing the Resident Evil Director's Cut. And it's not actually uncut, the, um, the opening movie is still edited for whatever reason. Um, I think the European version is the complete uncut version, but for some reason in America, uh, there was some kind of error or a miscommunication or something, and it, the cut version still got released. But this does have, um, in addition to um, the DualShock version, what was uh, added to this was the game was overall enhanced. Um, there were three different difficulty levels this time around, and there were some new camera angles, and some of the characters were redesigned. Um, and that's pretty much it for the director's cut of Resident Evil. But again, for five bucks, I cannot complain whatsoever. Ooh, excuse me. And the fact that it's also, again, the DualShock version and the disc is perfect is just the cherry on top. Very happy with this. Cannot wait to play this again. Um, 
I know I did a community post about it, and the next game that I'm going to talk about, and someone did mention that um, it would be cool if I did a, a playthrough. I, honestly, um, I would love to do a playthrough of not just the first Resident Evil, but two as well. Um, you know, it would be fun to, to do those for YouTube. Um, you know, so maybe one day. The problem is I suck at them, so I'd have to play them. Like, I, I know I played two last year, and I did terrible at it. Like, I had to, like, look up on YouTube where to go, and I completely forgot. And I had never played it on PlayStation before. I had only ever played it on uh, Nintendo 64, and Nintendo 64 has the cheat codes. Um, so I had always played it with the cheat codes. But for the first time not using any cheat codes. I actually did not die as much as I thought I did, but I did save a lot, and I know that kind of helps not get a good score in the game, but... Oh, well. But yeah, Resident Evil 1 and 2, maybe 3, if I ever get 3 again. I used to have it, but I got rid of it like a dumbass. Um, maybe do some, some playthroughs of those. But moving on, enough about Resident Evil for now. The other game that I found for five dollars is Final Fantasy VII. Yes, Final Fantasy VII, the Black Label. Uh, again, another game that I have not played in many, many years. Um, I probably played this game close to twenty years ago. That's how long ago I played Final Fantasy VII. Um, and again, like the Resident Evil uh, Disc One. Um, has like one light scratch and then it's just kind of dusty so i mean just a little windex will clean that uh disc two again some light scratches and a little dusty but other than that uh disc three again all you know fantastic condition um i mean i know people are thinking well why don't you sell them on ebay and make a bunch of money no like number one they were both five bucks i am not going to pass that up and the thing is, the one thrift store, it's called Community Aid. I don't know if Community Aid is everywhere, or it's just here on the East Coast, or whatever. But um, they had moved their video games, and I was wondering why the past couple times I went in there, I couldn't find any, because usually they're up in the front of the store. Um, but I know they're, like, remodeling the store and stuff, and I, you know, a couple, the past couple times I went in there, I walked out with nothing. Um but I walked over towards the electronics and they had a basket and they had a bunch of video games in there. And I saw these and I got really excited, uh, checked them. The discs were great. And I'm like for four ninety nine each five bucks, basically after tax. Um, I was like, hell yeah, I'll buy those. I mean, number one, two fantastic games for PlayStation and they're in wonderful condition and for really cheap, you're not going to find those very often out in the wild. So yeah, that's why I love going to thrift stores. I love, you know, finding cheap stuff because a lot of it, those, like the person that donated those in, they probably cleaned out a closet or something or it was their kid or whatever. They didn't want them. Hey, I found these. I don't need them. And they just donated them. That happens more often than people think. You know, that's why I always go to the thrift stores because you know, not just for video games, but movies or, or records or whatever. Like people a lot of times just don't want to either go through the hassle of trying to sell stuff, which it is a hassle because I have sold stuff online before. It is a pain in the ass, to be honest. Um, or it's just not that significant to them. Like whatever, you know, get rid of it. Take it to goodwill. So that's why I always go. So, yeah, I was glad I looked because, again, the past couple of times, I didn't really, I didn't see any video games, and I was surprised. I'm like, usually they have video games. Um, mostly, it's like sports titles that I don't want or other crap that I don't want. Um, but occasionally, such as this, I will find stuff that I actually want to buy, and it's in good shape and it's a decent price, so can't complain. Um, and then I went to. There is a video game store around the corner of my house, pointing that way. I know you obviously can't see that way. Um, but there is a video game store. It's where the retro arcade is at. And I did get, um, PlayStation one, two, and three, uh, games. I did get one, uh, PlayStation one game and it is NASCAR 98. And the reason why I got this is because, uh, 
the hell's going on here? Oh, that's why. Because I didn't have, I didn't hit it in time. Pardon me for one second. Just have something on in the background. Now, the reason why I got this game is because of my cousin, when we were younger, actually had this. I think at one point, because this came out in 97, it's always the year before, obviously. Um, I think at one point this might have been a pack-in game for the PlayStation, maybe for some of the later systems, uh, actual systems, not PlayStation itself, but when some of the later ones shipped out. Um, I think this might have been a pack-in title, I'm not sure, because this is the first NASCAR game for PlayStation, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I would go to my cousin's house and play this all the time, and the soundtrack is great. It has... The opening song is actually uh, Flirting with Disaster by Molly Hatchet. I'm just wondering what the other songs are on here. Um, that's that, Yeah, that's it. The other ones are obviously made for the game. Um, but yeah, I remember that song being in the game and... Um, you know, growing up wondering what that song was and then years later finding out. But... Yeah, I do remember, like, going to my cousin's house and playing, you know, all of us would, like, play this game. You know, the adults, everybody would sit around and, and play NASCAR 98. So, yeah, it's a bit of a nostalgic one, which I do hate that word. But, I mean, the disc is great, just some light scratches. It shouldn't be an issue. Um, but, yeah, I was, uh, I was really happy to see this. I've actually been wanting to get this game for a while. Really didn't want to order it off of eBay, um, but I was like, hell yeah, you know, I'll grab this. And, you know, I really don't fucking care about NASCAR. Um, when I was a kid, it was kind of cool because it's like, oh, cars and this and that, but I know nothing about NASCAR. Um, I do like to play the games, though, so there you go. But, yeah, I mean, you got Jeff Gordon in the front, uh, Dale Earnhardt Sr., may God rest his soul. I think that's Bobby Labonte's car, if I remember correctly. Um, as a kid, you know, I do remember these guys when they were racing, but, you know, I never followed it. I just had an interest in it a little bit, but yeah, this is a really fun game and I'm glad to finally getting, going to get a chance to play it again. And then, um, I got four PlayStation two games. Now this game, um, the Goodwill here had this, but I was like, you know what? Let me help these guys out. Let me help this little mom and pop game store out. You know, I like these guys. I like going in there. They know what they're talking about. They're, they've they got good prices on stuff, so I can't complain. Um, and it is Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX 2. I actually don't have the first one. The first one was on the original PlayStation. And this was kind of the sequel, spinoff, whatever, of Tony Hawk. I think this one, um, some of the companies involved were different, but Activision still worked on it like they did for the first one. Um, but yeah, this was basically the spinoff of Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Matt Hoffman um, actually would tour with Tony Hawk and stuff back in the day. And yeah, he did get uh, two video games based on him, which is pretty cool. Same with Dave Mira. Dave Mira also got two, but I don't have the the second Dave Mira game. I only have the first one uh, for PlayStation and Dreamcast. Uh, may hopefully Dave Mira is, is uh, resting in peace because of the circumstances of his death. Um, but yeah, I've never played this one. Um, but you know, I did like the first one, and this one's cool. I mean, it has uh, over ninety minutes of live action video, which is pretty cool. Eight levels, a new trick tweaking system. Uh, two, two player. Uh, you can design your own course and stuff. So, pretty cool. If the disc wants to come out, that would be amazing. And the disc is good. Again, some light scratches shouldn't be an issue. But yep, that is Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX Dose <laughs> or two. You know. And then next up, um, this is a compilation title, but I still like picking these games up. And this is Namco museum um so on here um you have uh pac-man dig dug pole position galaga and then they also like on the cover you can see you have the 
um, arrangement versions, which were like the newer versions. I think a, f a guy that I used to be friends with, um, actually, he passed away. I've talked about him before. Uh, a friend of mine that passed away. I believe he had this on Xbox. And I think we would go to his house and play it a lot. Um, yeah, a friend of mine that uh, that unfortunately has, has passed away. Um, yeah, actually, he did have it on Xbox. Now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, um, he did. And I remember playing this at his house very frequently. We would all play because it's two players. So we would, you know, take turns or whatever. But yeah, you have Pac the original Pac-Man. Uh, Ms. Pac-Man is on here as well. Uh, the arrangement version, which was like a, a remake type version. Uh, Dig Dug, the arrangement of Dig Dug, Galaga, the arrangement of Galaga, Pole Position 1 and 2, and then it has uh, Galaxian. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 games. Um, and there's actually hidden games on here as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to not only going back and playing the original Pac-Man, for the millionth time, or Dig Dug, or Miss Pac-Man, or, or whatever, but also uh, playing the arrangement versions again. And what's cool is it is actually the old CD disc format uh, for PlayStation because PlayStation Two, excuse me, because when PlayStation Two first started, they still did the CDs like they did for PlayStation One, and it didn't work out for them, so that's why they switched over to DVDs. For the game discs, um, but there you go. But very cool. Looking again, looking forward to not just playing this one, but playing all these games. Uh, some of these I've never played. Some of these I have not played in a long time. Um, next up, I got the original Spider-Man movie game. I could have sworn that I had this game, but I do not. Um, I looked around. I looked on my list. I looked through some of the boxes here of all because I do have all my video games here. Um, so maybe one day soon I will do a video game collection video. Um, I know a couple people have asked me about that uh, throughout the years, but I've never done it. But all, yeah, all, actually, no, 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 correction. Um, most of my video games are here. I do know that some of them, when we moved, well, when they moved, I wasn't here for it. That's not fair to say that. Um, when they moved, I know some video games were put in other boxes and stuff. So I think mo like 99% of my video games are here. Um, I think there's a couple stragglers that got put in other boxes for some reason. I just haven't found them yet. But anyway, again, I could have sworn I had this. This is the original Spider-Man movie game. I have played this before. Um, I just never owned it. I do have Spider-Man 2 for PlayStation 2. Um, and maybe one day, I will do a series of Spider-Man playthroughs because I would love to do Spider-Man 1 and 2 for PlayStation and then maybe I'll do the first two games. And I actually just got the PS4 Spider-Man um, and that's a really badass game so maybe I'll play that as well. Um, but this is actually a blockbuster. It still has the sticker on here which is why I grabbed it. And of course it has the booklet but the disc is different but that's okay. I'll get over it. But yeah, that is the Spider-Man movie game. And again, um, I have played this. I do remember liking it. Um, I remember like the first part of the game, you wear the wrestling costume, which I thought was really cool. I don't know if you could do that throughout the entire game. But the first part, I do remember uh, wearing that costume. But yeah, uh, really fun movie-based game. Same with Spider-Man 2. Of course, Spider-Man 2, everybody remembers the pizza delivery missions and all that. But that one is fun as well. And the last uh, PlayStation 2 game that I got is State of Emergency. Um, I have, again, I have not played this game in, again, probably about 10 plus years. Um, I remember a guy that I used to be friends with had this, and I remember playing it at his house. Um, but a really, really fun game. I do remember having a lot of fun with this. Um, made by Rockstar, one of their more underrated games, in my opinion. And this corporation takes over and basically you pick one of the characters and they fight back and you can cause like riots and destruction and you have to fight the cops and all that because they're, you know, in with the bad guys. Um, but yeah, I do remember having a lot of fun with this. I'm really looking forward to playing this again. Um, the disc is great. Again, some light scratches. I know I didn't check Spider-Man. I'll do that in a second here. But 
Yeah, uh, there is a sequel. I never played the sequel to this, but this is a really fun game. I highly recommend this if you have. Uh, I think it's on Xbox. It might be on Xbox, but it's really fun. Uh, the Spider-Man game, uh, mostly some fingerprints, but that can be easily removed with Windex or something, um, but not a problem. And then I did get one, again, one PlayStation 3 game. Uh, this is Mercenaries 2 World in Flames. I absolutely love the first Mercenaries game. Uh, it's one of my favorite PlayStation 2 games. Um, always wanted to play this. Never had a chance to. They had it for five bucks. I was like, oh, hell yeah, I'll grab that for five bucks. Um, I think it's more of the same. I think some of the game is play is a little bit different than the original game. Um, but I am really looking forward to, to playing this. And the Blu-ray disc is great. Um, you know, a little Windex, but other than that, you know, nothing to be worried about. But, yeah, again, really looking forward to playing Mercenaries 2 World in Flames. I do remember when this came out, I was really excited for it because, again, the first game, I still play the first game quite frequently. Um, it's very fun. But, um... I do remember when it came out. It didn't do much. I remember it kind of came and went. Um, but we'll see what happens. And then Pandemic, the game company, they're not around anymore. So we'll never see a third one. And I'm pretty sure EA doesn't care about this franchise. So we only got two of them. So that's it for the video games. The rest is all movies, um, VHS, DVD, and Blu-rays. I will go ahead and start with the VHS. <clears throat> So first up, uh, this is a comedy film that I really enjoy. Um, it's it's dumb fun, you know, but a lot of those movies are great. And I've actually been wanting to get this on VHS for a while. I remember not too long ago, um, I was like thinking about this movie and I was like, do I have that on VHS? And I don't, but I do now. And it is Half Baked with Dave Chappelle. Um, also, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Jim Brewer is in the film, as you could see. Um, Harland Williams. Uh, Clarence Williams the third is the bad guy. Uh, Tommy Chong is in the movie. Snoop Dogg. Uh, Willie Nelson. Bob Saget. A bunch of people are in this movie. Um, I do like the cover. I like how it's like they're normal. And then it's like they're high. You know, I like that. That's actually pretty funny. But, <clears throat> yeah, I have not watched this in a long time. But I really like this movie it's a really funny movie um i wish i don't think it's on blu-ray um let me just do a quick little search here um try not to i mean i'm already 22 minutes into this and i just started talking about the bulk of the material here but that's the way that it goes um Yeah, Half Baked, <clears throat> Half Baked is not on Blu-ray, which is unfortunate. Um, for some reason, it was released on HD DVD, but not Blu-ray. Um, but I hope that one day this movie gets a Blu-ray. Uh, really funny movie. Um, I really like it. And it's actually directed by uh, Tamara Davis, who did uh, Billy Madison, which is a movie and another movie I do really like. But yeah, I haven't watched this in a while. I was very happy to see it. You know, at Goodwill, and I grabbed it. I'm like, yeah, I'll definitely grab Half Baked on VHS. Cannot complain. Next up, I got Napoleon Dynamite. Um, I had this on DVD at one point and Blu-ray, but I got rid of it for whatever reason. But the good thing is, um, they did a remastered Blu-ray and it has new features and stuff, so that's pretty cool. Um, so it actually turned out to be okay. But yeah, um, a, a great movie. I've always liked this. I did also like the cartoon that they made out of it. Um, and it, this is actually from Hollywood Video, <clears throat> as you can see. But <clears throat> damn, I don't know what the hell's going on today. But yeah, Napoleon Dynamite, a fun, very funny comedy. You know, one that I've always liked ever since I first seen it. Uh, hi, everybody. Next up, this is a vampire movie that I've always wanted to see, um, uh, mainly for the actress that was in it because she actually died before the movie came out, uh, but the movie was done. It was all done and finished. Um, she just passed away after the movie was done, and it is Queen of the Damned, which is based on Anne Rice, 
uh, the Vampire Chronicles, which um, this is kind of a spinoff of Interview with a Vampire. It's the same character that Tom Cruise played in that one. It's just a different movie, different story. Um, but I do like remember. I do remember when this came out, and I wanted to see it because I did like Alea. Um, I liked her in Romeo Must Die, and I actually liked her music as well. And again, this was right when she died. This movie came out shortly after she had passed away. Um, never saw it until, you know, really now, until buying this VHS. So I'm looking forward to this. I heard it's not that good of a movie, but, you know, I'll be the judge of it for my own. Um, and I also heard that she's not really in the movie that much. Um, I heard, because, like, I remember... Obviously, she's in the forefront, you know, the promotion and all that was around her. Um, but I heard that she's only in like the second half of the movie. It's more about uh, Stuart Townsend being less than, um, which was the character that Tom Cruise played. Um, so we'll see. Again, I've, I've never seen this. You know, we'll see what happens with uh, Queen of the Damned. That's why I still buy VHS, because I would rather go to Goodwill and get the the tape for 99 cents or whatever. And if I don't like the movie, I'll just re-donate the tape. It's not that big of a deal. You know, it, it's beats paying for, you know, however much the DVD or the Blu-ray is, and I don't like it, and well, I know I'm not going to get the money back from a trade-in, so there you go. It happens. All right, another vampire movie. This one I actually have seen. It is Vampires Los Muertos with John Bon Jovi as the hero. Um, yes, this is the, and then also uh, Diego Luna, one of his first movies, and then Darius uh, McCrary from Family Matters. So a whole bunch of people um, are in this movie. This, again, is the first sequel to John Carpenter's Vampires. They did do another one, but I heard, I've heard nothing about that movie, so I'm assuming it's not good. Um but I do like this movie. I do remember when Sci-Fi Channel premiered it. It was like a Sci-Fi Channel original movie and all that. And I was like, oh, cool. Uh, John Bon Jovi's going to kill some vampires. Oh, I'll definitely watch that because I do like uh, his music. But yeah, I do like this movie. I do have it on DVD. But I was like, yeah, I'll pick it up on VHS. That's not a problem. Um, you know, not, and it wasn't like it was expensive or anything. But I was like, all right, cool. So... Yeah, and it's actually directed by Tommy Lee Wallace, who did Halloween 3 and Fright Night 2 and uh, some other movies. But yeah, this is a, it's not a bad movie. You know, it's a, it's a direct-to-video sequel. You know, I'm not going to expect much from it, but it's not a bad movie. I actually like it quite a bit. And next up, my Girl, a great film. Um, they also had the second one on VHS, but the tape was like a budget re-release, and it was like cheap and all that. And I was like, you know what? No, I'll, I'll pass on that. This is the you know the original release from you know Columbia TriStar back in the day. This is a former rental. This is from West Coast Video. Um, this one's from Movie Gallery, uh, Queen of the Damned, and uh, what was the other one? Half baked weren't rentals, but yeah. So this is like the original VHS. So I grabbed it, but yeah, the second one. I actually kind of like the second one more. That's just me. Um, it was some cheap re-release, and I was like, nah, I want the I want the the real the actual VHS. Um, but yeah, great movies. Um, this one is on Blu-ray. The second one is not. I don't know why they couldn't just release both of them on a two-pack or whatever, but what do I know, right? Um, but yeah, great movie. Um, I did watch these, both of them, actually. I did watch them a lot growing up because HBO and, like, TBS Superstation and Cable and all that would always run these movies, and it would always be a double feature. It would always be both of the movies. Um, but yeah, I actually enjoy both of them. I kind of like this, like I said, I kind of like the second one a little bit more because I like the story more. Like, this is, you know, pretty simple. I mean, both of them are simplistic, but I liked how in the second one she was trying to find out more about her mom and all this other stuff was going on. Um, I mean, this one, you know, she's 
becoming a girl, so to speak, and starting to fall in love, and then they, them fucking bees just had to kill Macaulay Culkin, you fucking bastards. I'm still mad about that. <laughs> I was mad about it as a kid, and all these years later, I think we're all still pretty upset about it, but, um... Great movie, never gets old. Uh, I, like I said, it the first one is on Blu-ray. I wish it would get features. I mean, what what the hell is Macaulay Culkin doing now? Like, come on, man, talk about or the the girl. Uh, what's her name? Anna uh, Chalumsky. What what is she doing? Like, come on, do a commentary or something, or both of them together, do a reunion and hug and talk and I don't know, but yeah. So moving on, um, I've got a couple of Westerns here. Uh, this one, I've actually always wanted to see this movie. Um, I remember when it came out. Um, I know in theaters, it kind of came and went. Um, I know it didn't make much noise in theaters. Um, but I do remember when the the video came out, because I remember seeing it like everywhere, and it was really like pumped up because of the cast. And I was like, well, it's a Western, and, you know, I like Westerns and it's a good cast, so maybe I'll check it out. And this also came out around the same time as American Outlaws, and that movie kind of had a similar fate. It didn't really do well, and um, that I've actually always wanted to see too. I just have never bought it or seen it or whatever, you know, either or. Uh, but this is Texas Rangers, which is, um, again, a Western. Really good cast. I mean, you got the Dawson, you got James Vanderbeek in it. Um, you also have uh, Usher is in the movie, Ashton Kutcher, Robert Patrick, Rachel Lee Cook, uh, Randy Travis, um, Tom Skerritt, Alfred Molina. So a really good cast. And, and I, I'm like really surprised this movie didn't make a lot more uh, noise when it came out again. It was in theaters, but it came and went. You know, it didn't, again, it didn't really do do much in the way of theaters. Um, and then I do, again, remember when this video, when the video came out, it was like everywhere and it was like really pumped up and I was like, oh, cool. And it's also directed by Steve Miner who did Halloween H2O and also Friday the 13th, two and three. And I was like, oh, cool. I like that guy. I like those movies. Um, so yeah, again, that's why I like going to Goodwill because, you know, like with Queen of the Damned, a movie that I've always been interested to see, I can see it cheap. And if I don't like it again, I'll just redonate the VHS. It's not that big of a deal. So yeah, Texas Rangers. Again, always wanted to see it. And same American Outlaws was the other one that came out around the same time and that didn't make any money either. Um that one has Con I know Colin Farrell's in that one and um Ali Larder from Final Destination. I think maybe Scott Kahn's in it as well. Is he? I have to look this up now. This is bothering me. Um I could have sworn Scott Kahn was in American Outlaws. He is in it. Okay, I was right. I just wanted to make sure. Yes, uh, Colin Farrell, uh, Scott Kahn, Ali Larder. Um, Timothy Dalton's also in the movie. Kathy Bates, uh, Harris Eulin, who played the judge in Ghostbusters 2, among other movies, uh, is in it. So a bunch of people. But yeah, I mean, it came out in America. It didn't make any money, and um, it was considered like a ripoff of the movies that I'm going to talk about next. Um, but yeah, I've always wanted to see it. I, I like westerns, so there you go. And like I said, uh, and I'm sure Texas Rangers kind of had a similar fate. I'm sure they're like, well, they're just ripoffs of these movies here. So there you go. But yes, I did get Young Guns. Uh, one and two on VHS. Um, I actually went to the to this particular Goodwill, which is here where I live, um, the day before, and I saw these, and I was like, "Do I have those?" And the problem is, I don't have on my phone my list of VHS that I own. I need to put it on my phone. Um, I keep forgetting to do it, um, so I passed on it. But I went back the next day. And they also had this, and I was like, well, I don't, because I don't really carry cash on me, so I don't want to, like, you know, buy one VHS for a dollar and swipe my card. But it's okay, because I went back, and they restocked the VHS, so I ended up getting all the, the ones that you just saw. 
Um, and I was like, I went, I came home, looked on my computer, and I was like, no, I don't have young guns on VHS. I'll go back and get them. And luckily, they were all still there. But so, yeah, so first we have the original Young Guns, which I do prefer the original. Um, this is the better movie, in my opinion, although I do like the second one. But yeah, great stuff. Um, I do have this, of course, on a DVD and Blu ray. And the feature, the reason why I have it on DVD is because they didn't transfer any of the features on the Blu ray. Um, the commentary with Lou Diamond Phillips is not on, on the Blu ray, but whatever. So. But yeah, Young Guns is a great movie. And again, Young Guns 2. I, again, I do like Young Guns 2. The only thing I don't like about this movie is the ending. Because um, everyone dies and then it just kind of like Billy the Kid just kind of walks away and that's it. You know, Well, not everybody dies. But you know what I mean. Like, you know, they kill off certain people. Other people kind of fuck off and... That's it. And then the movie just kind of ends. But you do get the badass song Blaze of Glory uh, from John Bon Jovi. Now, as you can see, this is like the Warner Brothers release, but the tape is actually the old original Fox release. I guess someone screwed up or something, but I don't mind um, because Young Guns 2, for some reason, Fox put it out and then um, Warner Brothers got the rights to it somehow later on. But yeah, so, uh, and I don't have, like, Young Guns 2 is on Blu-ray, but I think it's a made-on-demand release, if I'm not mistaken, because um, Sony has started to do that in the past couple years. They've been, like, they re-released Ace Ventura 1 and 2 that way. They put out Major League 2. They've actually been putting out a lot of movies that way. Um, but, I mean, most of those are good quality, so I'll buy those just to get them on Blu-ray, but I would love if like a shout factory or somebody would get the rights to young guns and do them right, in my opinion, because it's time for an upgrade, at least in my opinion. Um, but moving on to the DVDs, um, I did get a, f a number of wrestling DVDs. Actually, um, I went, I traded um, some stuff in at FYE, and I found the first two. Um, both of these I've actually been wanting to get. First up is Bobby the Brain Heenan from WWE. This is a documentary, of course, about Bobby the Brain Heenan, who we I think we all miss. Uh, he was definitely one of the best managers and commentators ever, um, and I definitely miss him. I do remember when he passed away after a long battle with cancer, um, but I'm glad that we at least got a DVD out of before before he passed. So uh, on here again. There's a documentary um, like WWE always used, used to do. They don't do them anymore because now they're only releasing pay-per-views on DVD, which is stupid. Um, and then there's seven matches on here that Bobby the Brain's in his Hall of Fame induction, which is hilarious. I love his Hall of Fame induction. And I still get a little teary-eyed at the end when he says, the only thing that's missing is I wish Monsoon was here, as you can tell now, because him and Gorilla Monsoon were the best commentating team in the history of professional wrestling, in my opinion. Um, we yeah, I still get a little choked up when he says that. Um, and then there's different moments and stuff from different shows, but yes, I uh, looking really looking forward to watching this. I, I really want to check this out relatively soon. And then I got one TNA DVD back when TNA was good. Um, this is the best of Samoa Joe Unstoppable. Uh, this is the first Samoa Joe DVD. They actually did another one, which is just called, I think, The Best of Samoa Joe. Um, but this is from the beginning. It has his debut on here. Um, you know, his matches with AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels and more. Um, so really looking forward to going back and watching a lot of these classic matches from, again, when TNA was actually good. Not now, where a fucking woman is the world heavyweight champion, because that makes sense. Yeah, whatever. I know people call me sexist or whatever, but it doesn't make sense in the realm of professional wrestling. Do you think that makes sense? Whatever. And the rest of these I got from uh, Kayfabe Commentaries. They were still running uh, their $5 DVD sale to get rid of all their DVDs because now they're going strictly digital, which I don't agree with, but whatever. Um, so I grabbed 
a few more. Um, I think they're all sold out. I don't think there's any left. Um, so the rest of them I'll just have to get elsewhere, which is fine. But first up, I got a guest booker with Robert Fuller. He is booking or guest booking, fantasy booking, whatever, uh, Shawn Michaels and the NWO. So pretty cool. And Robert Fuller was a booker back in the day um, for not just WCW, but Florida, Memphis, and uh, Continental Wrestling. So way back in the day. But looking forward to this since it has to do with Shawn Michaels. And then the other guest booker that I got is Al Snow when he books the Attitude Era. So looking forward to that. Love Al Snow. Uh, great wrestler. Great talent. Always liked him. Um, he actually just opened up the first accredited wrestling academy, which is pretty badass. Um, so looking forward to this one. And then I got a couple of the U Shoot series, which is a Q&A type thing. So first up, Sean Waltman, a.k.a. X-Pac or 123Kid or whatever name you want to call him. Um, always liked his work. And then we have China. May she rest in peace. Uh, again, I've always liked China. So looking forward to this. And she's got a puppy. So that's always good. And the last one is uh, Swaggle, a.k.a. Horn Swaggle. Um, I, I liked his character. You know, it was cool. But I'm um, looking forward. I've seen like some clips of these. Like I'm looking forward to watching the, the whole thing of them, you know. And then the rest are movies and TV shows. First up, um, this was just, I got on eBay, typed it in, was able to find it. Um, these are actually the, it's a two disc set. These are the bonus feature discs from the uh, Sopranos complete DVD uh, set. Now, the reason why I got this is because some of these features did not transfer over to the Blu-ray. And again, it was, I just got on eBay, typed it in and it popped up. It was like five bucks. I'm like, okay, five bucks, you know, to get the, the features that aren't on the Blu-ray. Sure. Why not? Uh, most of these are on the Blu-ray, but I figured, you know, it was a couple of dollars. So disc one is a two part, uh, thing. It's called Supper with the Sopranos where, uh, I think it's David Chase and some of the writers and the cast members. And they just kind of have dinner and reminisce um, about the show. Now, the shitty thing is, for some reason, like, the glue is coming apart. And it got, some of it got on the discs, but it should, like, I'm trying to get it off now. Um, most of it should come off. And they're they're not damaged. They just kind of got, like, smudgy. And even on, like, the front there, you could, you could see right there, like, some of the, the paper came off. But other than that, they're okay. And then the other thing that's on disc one is deleted scenes from all the seasons of the episodes. And these are legitimate DVDs. They're not copies or whatever. I guess someone just didn't want this or they got it somewhere, and didn't want it anymore. And then disc two has a two-part interview with David Chase, the creator. And fucking Alec Baldwin is the interviewer. I don't know why. Um, I just, I, I, I like Alec Baldwin as an actor, but I cannot fucking stand him as a person, uh, for many reasons, but yeah, for some reason, um, they got him to be the interviewer. I don't know why they couldn't just get someone that was on the fucking show, you know, that would make sense, but whatever. And then the other features, which are not on the Blu-rays, there is a, uh, Pally Center for the media. It's a kind of a. Q&A thing with some of the people that worked on the show that never made it to the Blu-ray and there's a thing called Extra Gravy which is um, some parodies and, and stuff that they did so on here um, when the Simpsons made fun of it they did a little like parody of the intro scene that's on here um, when Mad TV did it and there's some other stuff as well so yeah for a couple dollars to get these I'm not complaining, you know, really cool, uh, just to get the two things that didn't make it on the Blu-ray, I, for five bucks, that's, or seven bucks, or whatever I paid, plus shipping, not a bad deal, at least in my opinion, um, I'm a huge fan of The Sopranos, and I was bummed out to find out that not all the features made it over, and luckily I was able to get that, excuse me, fairly cheap off of eBay, 
So yeah. So moving on. Um, a couple more TV shows here. Uh, this was a different Goodwill I went to. I found this. Now this one's kind of falsely advertised. It says it's the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, but it's actually episodes from the other, or the second Mario cartoon, which is the Adventures of Super Mario Brothers Three. And this is King Koopa Catastrophe. Now the reason why I got this, I do have the complete series sets for all the Mario Brothers cartoons. The reason why I got this one is because this has the original music. Now, as people know, that have like the cartoon. The DVDs are missing the music because they would do like music segments and they would cover popular songs from back in the day. Um, and of course, Shout Factory did not want to pay all the money like all these other companies to get all those music rights on there. Um, but this DVD was released way before that. And I guess either they just kind of released it and kept their mouth shut or whatever the case was, or they just paid for it. Um, but the episodes on here feature the original music. Now, I don't know if all these releases have the uncut music, but this one is confirmed as having all the original music in it, hence why I bought it. So it does have uh, three episodes on here because, remember, they would do two stories. And they, again, they have all the music. And again, it's not Super Mario Brothers Super Show. It's the Adventures of Super Mario Brothers 3. Um, again, why they... I don't know. It's just shitty, shitty advertising or whatever. And here is a booklet where they show all the other different releases. And again, I don't know if all the other ones have the uncut music or whatever that I would have to look into. Um, and they also released a bunch of Sonic stuff. And these are these are the ones that came out before the Shout Factory set. So these are all like the random episodes that they did. And then of course. They did some other stuff, but they also did Zelda. So, yeah, this was done, I think. There's no copyright on here um, for the actual DVD, but I think these came out like the early 2000s. Um, so before the Shout Factory stuff, which I do have all those. But to get them officially with the original music, I'm all for. I've seen online different torrents and stuff that have the episodes, which is cool. You know, one day I'll grab those. But to get them officially, I'm all for it. You know, that's just me. Um, next up, I got the... There's only this season available on DVD. But it is the first season of The Invisible Man. This is the 2000 Sci-Fi Channel show. Um, I've heard of this. I've never seen it. You know, it was five bucks. I was like, great. You know, that's, that's a cheap price. And again, I traded stuff in. So it wasn't like I paid full price for it. Um, but yeah, I uh, I saw this, and again, um, I've heard of this show. I've heard good things, and I was like, I'll you know, again for five bucks, I'll definitely check this out. Uh, but what's weird is there is a bonus episode from season two. So why the fuck? And this is you know one thing that really pisses me off, especially about TV shows, um, especially when it's a show like this where there's only two seasons. Why the fuck would you just not release it? as a complete series and get it done you know why do you got to pussyfoot around and do season by season and then well season one didn't sell as many as we thought so we're not going to release the only other season of the show it makes no sense to me um of course this show is not the only one that suffered that fate there's been many shows over the years that have suffered that fate um but i'm just saying in this particular case since this is the one that i got but yeah i don't know why they couldn't have just released it back in, what, 2000, 2008, you know, over 10 years ago now. They could have just did it and wouldn't have had to worry about it. But now people that's why people buy bootlegs or they download off of sites because pe they don't want to do it the right way the first time. But I digress. Um, next up, I got a stand-up comedy DVD. Uh, this is Andrew Dice Clay, One Night with Dice. Uh, this is his one of his first... Uh, specials. I don't know if this was on HBO or, or it was just a tape that came out back in the day, but this is one of his very first ones. And this is a re-release. This is from 2011. There is a older release, but I got this one because I figured the the quality would be better on here. So yeah, this is from 
it says 86 on here. So, yeah, this is way before, you know, uh, getting kicked off of MTV and, and all that stuff. So this is back in the in the day. This is back in the beginning of Dice's career. Um, this might it be might have even been before he showed up at when he was in the Rodney Dangerfield special where he showed up at his club. And it was just different comedians, and he was in there. I think this was like a year or two before that. So again, I'm assuming this is just something that was filmed and released later, or it was a tape or something before he got big or whatever. But yeah, I mean, brand new factory sealed. This is a little bit harder to come by. I think I paid like 25 with shipping, um, but I wanted to grab it finally. And I do have the other one that I didn't have which is I'm over here now. That should be here in the next couple of days because it's coming from Amazon, so it's slower because it's from a marketplace. Uh, but I have all the other ones that came out. They're actually right here, uh, which is uh, fucking uh, No Apologies and Dice Rules. Those are the only ones, the only ones that are on DVD. The rest never made it to DVD for whatever uh, reason, but I have them all, uh, and I'm just going to burn them to a disc. So there you go. And the rest, couple rest of these uh, DVDs here are all movies. Um, first up, another movie that I've always wanted to see ever since it came out. I just never had the opportunity. Is the remake, actually, of The Time Machine. Um, again, I remember when this came out. It looked cool. I was like, oh yeah, time travel, this and that. Um, I think this flopped back in the day because I don't... I never heard of, you know, oh, it was a huge success and this, that, and the other thing. Um, I never heard anything about this movie, you know, really. So, yeah, I mean, it was two ninety nine at Goodwill. I was like, you know what? I'll grab it. It's not on Blu-ray. It's only on DVD, you know. Um, I like Guy Pearce. Um, Orlando Jones is also in the movie. Uh, Samantha Mumba, who was a singer back in the day, she's in it. Jeremy Irons is in it. So yeah, I figured why not, you know, for a couple of dollars for a movie that I've always wanted to see, why not? Next up, I got the original DVD release of Varsity Blues because the one that I have, the deluxe edition, is actually edited. Um, they actually cut out some of the nudity for whatever reason for that DVD and also the Blu-ray. Uh, but this is the original release. This is the uncut release. I did put them in. Um, there is a four second time difference, which I know is not significant, um, which does happen from release to release because of the logos and whatever they put before and after the movie. Um, but it is a couple seconds. So I'm assuming that some of it was cut out. Uh, but even if it's not, it's whatever, you know, it's not that big of a deal. I'll just have an extra one in case. Um, but yeah, um, I will down the road maybe watch them like side by side or something or you know. But I was reading on a bunch of places online that it was they are it is edited. Like people bought them and was like, wait a minute, something's wrong here. So, um, and I've seen this movie enough times to know. So I'll probably watch this and then watch the parts of the movie on the other disc that have the nudity and spot the differences, um, whatever. But yeah, for some reason they cut out nudity in the other version the other release and the blu-ray but I, it's not that big of a deal uh but yeah they also did that with an, a movie that i actually just watched not too long ago um all the right moves with tom cruise for some reason um the blu-ray removed i don't know if it was tom cruise's nudity or leah thompson some of the nudity did not make it on the blu-ray for whatever reason and i just watched it and i was like a little put off by it because it's not graphic it's just like you know basic nudity i mean it's nothing grotesque or graphic or whatever it's just you know kind of simple nudity and i don't know why they would i don't know i really don't know that's the whole political fucking hollywood bullshit um but it was like i was watching it and i'm like okay why like i personally don't find it to be that bad it wasn't you know pornographic or anything like that it was just a simple shot of nudity i don't know <laughs> moving on um next up another movie that um i have not seen in a long long time actually and it's not on blu-ray orange county with jack black and colin hanks um i remember watching this on comedy central actually um many years ago and i actually liked it 
And um, of course, uh, <clears throat> Fye always runs a buy two get one for a dollar on the used, and I think this was one. This was one of the ones that was a dollar. Um, well, it was ninety cents because I get ten percent off with the the card. Um, but I was like, yeah, I'll grab that. And again, I have not seen this in many many years. Actually, probably well over ten years now. Um, but I did like it, you know, Jack Black is a stoner, which is funny in this Colin Hanks is his brother and he's trying to get into Harvard, I think it is, or Stanford, my bad, Stanford. And, um, there was a, an error and he doesn't get in and he gets all depressed and they fig they try to figure out a way to help him get in, you know, one of those type of movies, but it's a funny, harmless little movie. It's not that big of a deal. Um, Catherine O'Hara and John Lithgow are in it. Um, and I think uh, Kevin Klein is at the end of the movie as well. Uh, he has a small part, which, of course, they don't put him on the uh, the DVD here. But, <clears throat> yeah, I, I do remember having fun with this one, so I'm looking forward to checking it out again. <clears throat> I need a drink now because I'm losing my voice almost an hour in here, but now we're almost done, so. I will try to go quick. <clears throat> um, next up, like yet again, another movie that I've never seen before. Always wanted to, only on DVD. Found it at Goodwill for two ninety nine, and it is Kiss of Death with David Caruso, uh, Nicolas Cage, and Samuel L. Jackson. Um, I do have this actually on VHS, but it's packed away. Um, but I saw, you know, again two ninety nine. I figured, why not? Um, this is a quasi remake of the movie called Kiss of Death, um, and it's about you know David Caruso is a crook and he gets lured back in. Um, Samuel Jackson's a cop who tries to help him out. Nicholas Cage is like his cousin or something, and it's a whole cat and mouse type thing and all that. So yeah, so I'm looking forward to this really good cast. Um, in addition to the three stars, uh, Michael Rappaport's in it, Ving Rhames, Stanley Tucci, um, Catherine Erb is in it, who I haven't heard that name in a while, Helen Hunt, um, a bunch of people, you know, are in this movie. So looking forward to, to checking this out, Kiss of Death. Like I said, not on Blu-ray. So there you go. And the last DVD, um, I did get the second one when I was out in California, um, but I've always wanted to see both of them. Never have. And I, ow, fucker. Got this off of eBay pretty cheap. It is Bounty Hunters with Michael Dudikoff. Um, again, I grabbed, I found the second one out in California, and I went on eBay and finally just went ahead and grabbed the first one. Um, never seen these. Always wanted to. Um, always liked Michael Dudikoff and Lisa Howard from Highlander is his partner in this. Um so again, looking forward to checking both of these out. Never seen them. These are actually on Blu-ray. Um, Echo Bridge put them out, but they're out of print, so they're hard to find now. But if I like them, I will definitely try to get them on Blu-ray. So we'll see. Bounty Hunters. Um, and then the rest are all uh, Blu-rays. So let's go ahead. Again, I know I'm an hour here. I'll try to make these quick. First up. Rain Man, great movie. Um, there is a newer Blu-ray out there that is remastered. I don't know if it's in 4K. I was trying to look online and I couldn't find anything about 4K. Um, but there's no new features. It's the same features. So I'll take the you know take the L on the better picture quality. It's not that big of a deal. I'm pretty sure this Blu-ray is still going to look decent. If not, if it's horrible looking, I will try to find the other one. Um, but for now, um, I'll just stick with, you know, the older Blu-ray. You know, it's, it's still a great movie either way. Rain Man's still a classic, so can't go wrong. Next up, uh, this just got released, so I just went ahead and grabbed it off of Amazon. And it is the Beverly Hills Cop Collection. All three movies, uh, two and three, are first time in America on Blu-ray. And they are all remastered in 4K, which was the big selling point. Now, the shitty thing is the sequels don't have the features from the DVD. Uh, two had um, interviews with the cast and Tony Scott. Uh, there was a deleted scene with the where they're walking through the lasers. 
um, there was a little feature at a couple minute feature at about the song Shakedown. There was a couple other things on there, and then Beverly Hills Cop Three had some interviews as well. Um, not for some reason, for whatever fucking reason, Paramount decided not to do it. Uh, it's not on here. But the first movie has all the features from the DVD, and then there's some new stuff as well, um, which is cool. But still. Um, it's good and bad because not only, I mean, you get all the movies in 4k and they're each on their own disc, which is great, but really Paramount, you were that fucking lazy to where you couldn't put the features, the, the 20 minute of interviews for Beverly Hills Cop 3 and the maybe an hour of extra features for Beverly Hills Cop 2 on a Blu-ray. Like you're that fucking lazy, really, whatever, you know, but I can't really be that mad because, again, they're in 4K. They're going to look amazing. So, there we go. Now, if we could get, like, Golden Child on Blu-ray and another 48 hours, that would be great, too. But probably won't happen. And then I also grabbed this because Amazon, that was, like, 20 bucks, And if you spend over 25 you get free shipping. So, I grabbed this since I didn't have it on Blu-ray. The Sixth Day with Arnold, a very underrated Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, one that I've always liked. I, ever since it came out, I liked it. Um, you know, I know people kind of shit on it and stuff. Well, it's the clones and the what whatever. It's still a fun, you know, early two thousand sci fi movie. This was one of Arnold's last big movies, to be honest, before he became governor. Um, and yeah, I've, I've actually always liked this movie. I think it's fun. And a really good cast. I mean, Terry Crews, when he first started, uh, Michael Rooker, Michael Rapport, uh, Robert Duvall is in the movie, uh, Tony Goldwyn, uh, Wendy Crewson. Her name is not on the back, but yeah, Wendy Crewson actually plays uh, Arnold's wife in the movie from uh, Santa Claus. She was in Santa Claus with Tim Allen. But I know people shit on it because, oh, they fucking cloned Arnold and the, 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 the stupid and whatever. No, it's a fun movie. I mean, come on. Arnold tells a guy, you should go clone yourself. Why? So you can go fuck yourself. I mean, that's a pretty badass one-liner, at least in my opinion. Moving on. Um, finally, I got this on Blu-ray again. I used to have it because it was in a three-pack. But... Uh, Cobra, so now you know what I'm talking about. Cobra, of course, got the uh, Shout Factory Collector's Edition treatment. And in the last update, I got Assassins. And then in this update, I got The Specialist, which I still really like The Specialist after all these years. Um, this is actually before Stallone didn't movies didn't make any money. Um, this was, I think, the last big hit he had until like Rocky Balboa. Um, cause Assassins and Judge Dredd both flopped, um, Daylight made money, but I actually think, actually, no, 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 Daylight was a big hit. This one was like one below that. Copland made money, but I don't like, I don't know what the hell happened with Copland. I really don't know. I'd like to do a, a more in-depth video about that part of Copland. Um, and then after that he did, you know, some direct video stuff and then he went and did Rocky and Rambo again. Um, but yeah, this was actually one of his last big hits before uh, the kind of the the return of the early two of the two thousands. But I've always liked the specialist. I like the idea of it. It's got a lot of good explosions and pyro and stuff like that. <clears throat> now my voice is getting weak, but always like this one. <sighs> Excuse me. Next up, <clears throat> it says used, but it's actually still brand new. But I got raising Arizona. Um, I could have sworn, I could have sworn that Shout Factory did a collector's edition of this movie, but I am wrong. I don't know why, I don't know why that popped in my head, but it deserves it, in my opinion. This movie definitely deserves it. It's a classic by the Coen brothers. Um, I mean, great cast in it. I mean, you got Randall Tex Cobb running around on a motorcycle, shooting lizards and everything. Uh, William Forsythe is in the movie. Um, just such a zany, great comedy. I really like this movie. Um, I wish it had features, but it doesn't. Uh, this was actually on Clarence, which was cool, but it's Serpico with Al Pacino based on a true story. 
about uh, Serpico, who was a cop in New York that started to bring down all these dirty cops and stuff back in the day. Um, I have not seen this in quite a while, but I'm looking forward to checking it out again. So, yeah. Next, finally got this on Blu-ray. I've been wanting to get this for a while. It is X-Men The Last Stand. I actually like this movie. Um, I know most people don't. It's not that bad of a movie. There are far worse X-Men movies out there. The last bunch have all been terrible. Um, but I saw this in the drive-in back in the day, back in 2006. Um, yeah, 2006. Wow. But I've always liked this movie. And this is the two-disc. It has all the features and stuff, so... Hell yeah. But, yeah, I actually like this. The first three X-Men I thought were fine. And then it started to get weird. The first Wolverine was kind of weird. The second one got better. And Logan was the best one out of the Wolverine ones. And then all the other X-Men movies, I could really... Well, apart from Days of Futures Past. I actually like Days of Futures Past. So, let me back up a second. The first four, chronologically, I like. And then the Wolverine movies. Um... And then after that, the, the prequels, I don't care for. First Class, Apocalypse, and I haven't seen Dark Phoenix, but I could give fuck all about Dark Phoenix. Next up, I got Mobsters. Um, Yeah, I I have not seen this in a long time. Fucking Claire. Um, but yeah, I, I saw this. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll definitely grab that. But it's about the, um, basically, the creation of the mafia and the five families and all that. And Good cast. I mean, you got Christian Slater, uh, Richard Grieco, who was big at the time, Patrick Dempsey, uh, Costas Mandalore. They play the the four lead guys. Um, F. Murray Abraham's in it. Anthony Quinn. Um, good movie. Again, I've not seen this in a long time, but I'm looking forward to watching it. Um, next up, Outbreak. Great movie. Another one I have not seen in a long time. Um, I think the last time I saw this movie, I was in school, actually. Yeah, for some reason, we watched this in biology class, I guess because of the, the virus and all that. And I do, what was really funny was I do remember the scene, which is the best scene in the movie, where Dustin Hoffman runs in and he goes, we're in deep fucking shit and we're going to be in more deep fucking shit if we don't do something. Um, remember the teacher like looked up and was like, what? And he like looked at the box and he goes, I thought this movie was PG-13 <laughs> and it's obviously not. Um, that's just a really funny moment, but, uh, but yeah, um, I, yeah, I've not watched this movie in quite a while, but Outbreak is a great movie. Uh, Patrick Dempsey is, I forgot, he's actually in this movie as well, along with Dustin Hoffman and Rene Russo and Donald Sutherland and Cooper Gooding Jr. and Kevin Spacey who fucking gets killed by the evil monkeys with the Motaba virus. So yeah. Um, next up, I got Child's Play 2 and 3 which are the only sequels that I actually like. Fuck the rest. Um, Child's Play 2 is a great sequel, great follow up to the original. Um, it actually, yeah, it says on sale but they charge me full price but whatever. I didn't feel like going back in the store and arguing and everything. Um, and then I actually kind of like Child's Play 3 a little bit more. I like the military school and, and Chucky like dresses up like as a fucking commando. Like that's actually really cool. Really good stuff in my opinion. Um, but yeah, these are both uh, solid movies in my opinion. What pisses me off though is Universal released these on purpose so Shout Factory couldn't get the rights to it. That because when Shout Factory did the first one, they were actually trying to get the rights to two and three, but Universal put these out with, I don't even think there's trailers on here. I think it's just, you know, the movies. Um, so they did that on purpose so they couldn't give Shout Factory. And I think that was kind of what led Shout Factory to not wanting to work with Universal for a little bit, but I think they worked it out. Um, I would love if those two would get features and stuff, hopefully one day, because those are the only sequels that I like. The rest suck. All the other sequels fucking blow. But yeah. So anyway, a couple more here. Almost done. Excuse me. LA Confidential. Now, there is a newer Blu-ray, but 
The only thing that's different is the packaging, and it says 20th anniversary. All the features are the same. And this is another movie that I've always wanted to see, and I never have. And again, this was critically acclaimed, and it won all these awards and, and all this shit. Like, Kim, Kim Basinger won an Oscar for it, which is cool because she's a great actress. Um, but I don't know. I just always wanted to see it. I guess it's because it takes place in, what, the 30s? It doesn't say, but, you know, it's that old Hollywood-type movie, and, you know, I always like those kind of movies. So, yeah, I've always wanted to see this. And there's an amazing cast. I mean, you got Danny DeVito, Kim Basinger, Russell Crowe, uh, Guy Pearce, uh, Kevin Spacey, the weirdo, um, you know, really good. James Cromwell. I mean, there's a really good cast in this. So, looking forward to checking this. And this is another one that I have on VHS, but it's it's packed away, so I've never seen it. So, yeah. And the last movie that I got is Red Scorpion. Finally got this Blu-ray. I've been wanting to get it since it came out back in 2012. Right? 2012. I was correct. Um, I just never grabbed it for whatever reason. Um, but, yeah, finally got it. And I did also actually order the Aero Video release from the UK because there's different features. That will be here hopefully this week. Um, but this is the American release, um, and it does have the not only the DVD and the Blu-ray, but it came with the booklet, and it has the reversible cover, which is the original poster, and the VHS. But this one is actually pretty cool. I do like both, so maybe I'll just like keep keep this one for a little bit and then switch out. But yeah, Red Scorpion and. Uh, 2K remaster uh, commentary with Joe Zito. The Arrow video is a different commentary. It's still with Joe Zito, but it's different. Um, there's a interview with Dolph Lundgren. Arrow video has a different interview, and there's also an intro by Dolph Lundgren. Um, there's a video interview with Jack Ambroff, or yeah, Ambroff, who was the producer, and he was also the scumbag that got arrested and everything. I do remember hearing about that. Uh, interview with Tom Savini, behind-the-scenes footage, uh, trailer TV spots, that kind of stuff. So, finally. Finally got Red Scorpion, one of my favorite Dolph Lundgren movies. And last but certainly not least, I did get a couple of documentaries. Um, first up, I actually got Doomed, the untold story of Roger Corman's Fantastic Four. Really like this one. I did watch this a few months ago. Um, I did it on a double feature with the next documentary that I'm going to talk about. But, yeah, I really like this. Um, the history behind this movie has always interested me because I remember as a kid, I had a Wizard magazine where the feature story was this movie. And, of course, the movie never got released. Um, and it just always, the history and, and why it never came out and, and all that really just interested me. And, again... This is the documentary of it. There is a bunch of features on here. Um, there's some panel discussion. There's interviews, outtakes, stuff like that. And also, I didn't know this when I bought it, but it came with a bonus disc. Um, it says pre-order bonus disc. I got this off of eBay, but I ordered it from the people that did it. And there was no mention on the listing that there was going to be a bonus disc in there. So I'm look, I don't know what's on it. Um, but I'm really, I'm sure it's like extended interviews or whatever. I'm really looking forward, uh, to not only watching this documentary again, cause I really enjoyed it, but also the features and it is a burn on demand Blu-ray, but that really doesn't bother me because this was independently financed and produced and all that. That's really cool. I don't, I don't mind that. Um, and this does have the interview with Roger Corman on here, an extended interview. Um, so looking forward to that. And also, in addition to the bonus disc, it actually came with a Blu-ray copy of the movie, which I have never seen this movie. Um, again, the whole history, I remember hearing about it growing up, uh, and there's, oh, but there's bootlegs. And I'm like, well, where can I find these bootlegs? Like, I want to see this movie because I've always liked Fantastic Four. Um, but yeah, this is a Blu-ray version of the movie. This is the best quality it is transferred from a first-generation VHS, so it should be pretty good. Um, of course, this is not the official version. It is a bootleg. 
But um, there are some features on here. You do have a scene-specific commentary with the director, and then you have the trailer. So that's actually pretty cool. So, and this was like fifteen bucks off of eBay. Um, they there's a feature on eBay where if people are watching your item, you can offer it a little bit cheaper, and they actually offered it at fifteen. And I was like, yeah, I will definitely grab the, both of these for fifteen bucks. So. Um, Again, really looking forward to watching the documentary again and the features and also watching this for the very first time. Looking forward to it. So that is the Fantastic Four 94 set, so to speak. And the other documentary that I did a double feature with is The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened? Another excellent documentary. I really enjoyed this. Um, again, I remember... As a kid, hearing they're going to make another Superman movie and Nicolas Cage, I'm like, Nicolas Cage is going to play Superman? That's really cool. And I do remember seeing the pictures of him in the costume, and I was like, well, why did the movie never get made and all that? Um, but yeah, this is the Blu-ray version. Um, this has not only the documentary, but a bunch of features on here. So again, looking forward to watching the documentary again. Really liked it, and also the features. And the director, John Schnepp, he actually died not too long ago. I, I was like, wow. Because he was younger. Like, I don't know what happened, but um, I remember reading that he, he passed away. So I was like, holy shit. But, yeah, um, really liked this documentary. This was awesome. And this is one of the movies I wish got made. Like, it would have been a badass movie, in my opinion. And last but certainly not least, I actually received, finally, my physical copy of In Search of the Last Action Heroes. Um, it finally showed up. I don't know what happened with the shipping and why it didn't update and all that, but it's here. It is here. Um, again, another documentary that was amazing. I was very, very happy with the results. I'm very proud that I contributed to this, and I will show the goodies in a minute here. Um, but definitely looking forward to watching this again. There's features on here. There's some extended interviews. Um, there's also a little interview about video games based on movies, which is, should be interesting to watch. Um, but some of the interviews, uh, Paul Verhoeven and Mario Pizarro talk about the Crusades and Cutthroat Island. Uh, Steven D'Souza talks about Judge Dredd. Mario Pizarro talks about Spider-Man. Um, Shane Black and Bill Duke talk about Jean-Claude Van Damme in Predator, so that should be cool. Um, Brad Fidel talks about doing movie soundtracks, so that should be badass. Uh, Peter McDonald, who directed Rambo 3, talks about directing Van Damme in Legionnaire. And Brad Fidel talks about Terminator doing the music for Terminator 2 3D, so very cool. Um, I did hear some rumors that some of the retail versions of this aren't working, so actually, after I'm done recording this video, I will check my disc just to make sure, but I've heard some rumors that, depending on where you buy this from, the discs are jacked up. So hopefully this one isn't. We'll see. And then, in addition to the Blu-ray, I did get a pretty cool postcard of the artwork and a poster of the artwork. So there we go. And I'm definitely going to get this framed, you know, again, uh, very, very happy with the way this documentary turned out. And I'm, I'm proud. I am. I'm proud that I actually got to work, be part of, of, of a movie, basically. You know, I got to be part of a documentary, not in it, but I got to help produce it. Basically, I put my money into it. So they I helped get it made. So I'm very proud of that. That's very awesome. Um, the horror one has not shipped out yet. I don't know when that's supposed to ship out, but hopefully soon, because I really want, I mean, I have the digital of it, but I want the Blu-ray, you know what I mean? So yeah, so that's it. I know this was a long collection update, a lot of stuff, but I hope that you guys liked it. Um, I need to relax my voice because I've been talking too damn long and I need to get some sleep because I got to work tonight, but I will talk to you all later. See ya.